Hello everyone and welcome to this quick After Effects tutorial animating a destination map. Here we will cover some essential After Effects techniques such as using the pen tool to draw a path, animating its stroke using a trim path operator and revealing the destination info by creating and animating a mask. We've got a lot to cover so let's go ahead and dive into it. So go ahead and open up the roadmap to Hagia Sophia After Effects project, which is included in your exercise files if you wish to follow along. And looking at this project file here, I've created a folder for the Illustrator files we're going to use, another folder for the photos and a composition. So inside the photos, click and drag the Hagia Sophia street map to your timeline. And basically what you see here is a screenshot from Google Maps when I enter the address to go to the museum. Which first I'm going to scale this down, it's a bit big, so press S to scale and scale this down a bit. And just move it up. Like so. And then I'm just going to lock this layer because I'm not going to need it anymore. And then the next step is to create the path. So for that I'm going to use the good old pen tool. Just make sure here in the fill options that you have none for fill, but you do have a stroke, of course. So we want to click and drag from the outside just a bit. So we have the curve. Click and drag to create your path. Keep clicking and dragging. Now I'm going to hold down the Alt key or the Option key to break the path the handle. Like so here, so hold on the Alt key or the Option key, break the handle here, and then I think we're going to stop around there. Okay. All right, now you can fix this a bit, just drag the handles here if you wish, and Maybe here too for me, something like that. Okay, not a big deal. I like what I see. So uh, if you uh, tap right now, if you open up the Google Maps app and or the on the web, you will see that when you enter an address to go somewhere and get directions, the path actually has two colors, has two blue colors, one dark and one lighter. So Let's go ahead first and hit enter return to change this to rename this to road map. Hit enter return. Let's open up the its contents. Here's the shape. Here's the path. Here's the stroke. The stroke is red. First of all, I'm going to increase this to 15 and then I'm going to change its color. So I have a library here. Here's one. Take the eyedropper. Boom. Click on this guy. And for line cap, which is the end, instead of butt cap, go ahead and change to round cap. And for line join, instead of minor join, which is this one right here, go ahead and change this to round join. Okay. Again, you can also go back to the path. Okay. If you want to fix the path. Okay. Maybe something for me like that. Okay. All right. Um, I'm just gonna make this even smoother. Okay. All right. So I like what I see now. And that's the first stroke. Now we need another stroke, one more. And that will be the lighter blue. So go ahead and add another uh, stroke operator. There we go, stroke two. Open its contents. I'm going to go for 10, but I'm going to change the color to the lighter blue. There we go. If I zoom in, I like what I see. Okay. So let's close this up because that's the first one. Now we're going to animate the top um, path. Okay. So because we need to have the same path exactly, you want to duplicate this layer. So control D or command D. Lock this guy here. Hit enter return. 
and then rename this to animated. Okay, so we have different names. Open up its contents, open up the shape. I don't need a stroke too, too many strokes, one is enough. But let's go ahead and bring this down to six, let's say, and then take the color, this guy here. So let's do what I did. I think I like what I see. Okay, so I'm going to animate this. You might even go seven. Yeah, maybe. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and animate this. But before I do so, there's one more file that I need to bring in, and that is the map dot. So bring this into your timeline right there in the top. And let's go to the layer menu. Let's make sure that this is a vector layer. You can delete that one now. So if I move this, you will see that the anchor point is not center here. And that's quite important because we're going to scale this down. So I want to scale this down from its center. So go to the layer menu, transform, and then create center anchor point in layer content like so. Okay, let's move this right there at the end. Press S to scale. Let's bring this down to, let's say, 50%. Okay. And I'm okay with that. All right. We got that. And again, I'm going to lock this. But now we're going to animate this. So we need to add another operator here. I'm going to bring this up. So click on the Add button here and then add the Trim Paths operator. And from the first keyframe, let's say, we're going to use the end here. So I'm going to click on the stopwatch to create the first keyframe. Let's make sure this is zero. Move in maybe, let's say, two seconds. Okay. And then let's bring this up to 100. Let's play the animation. You can go to preview here and return to the first frame. Play this. Let's do this one more time. If your thing is too slow, you can also bring it in and play this again and something like that. Entirely your call. But we animated the, the first path. So I'm going to save this. Controllers to save, commands to save. Up next, the pin icon. The pin drop that um, it from the top it drops right here and it shows the exact location. All right, so this is inside the um, Illustrator uh, folder. So click and drag this uh, pin icon right there, at the top of the timeline. Let's make sure this is a uh, a vector layer. So create shapes from vector layer like so. You can go ahead and delete that. Also, let's press Enter Return to rename this layer to just pin icon. And then go back to the layer menu, transform, and make sure that we have these anchor point city run in the center, like so. Let's go ahead and zoom in a bit, put this over here, and then press S to scale because a bit I think this is too big. So you can use your arrow keys on your bring on your keyboard to position this. See something like that, right? I think I like the size. Anyway, I'm okay with that. And uh, the the way we're going to make this is this is going to be its resting position. But then the previous position will be from the top. So it will drop from the top. All right. So that will be first. I want to make this a 3D layer. Now, sometimes you don't see that. You don't see the option of a 3D layer. So go ahead when you have toggles and switches and modes. So you might be here, so make sure you click on that again. And, and let's make sure that this is a 3D layer, like so. Press uh, P for position. And let's see, the animation stops there. So first keyframe, click on the stopwatch. And move the playhead a bit, create another keyframe. Go to the previous keyframe. Just make sure you're on that keyframe and just bring this out of the screen right there. Okay, let's play the animation. Okay, I like the speed. It looks okay, 
but I would like to have a more organic animation here. So select this keyframe, animation menu, keyframe assistant, and use the easy is in, like so. Okay, let's play that. Now, I do like what I see, but I wouldn't mind to have more of a dramatic entrance. In this case, what I mean is just make sure you're selected on this keyframe. Go ahead to your graph editor and make sure in the speed graph, this is going to be outside your screen. So I'm using the speed graph. Okay. In this case, on this keyframe, all I want is bring the influence a bit higher. So let's play this. There we go. All right. You get the idea. It's just more dramatic. It's, it's a very nice to, uh, organic motion to it. Okay. Now, another thing that I'm going to do, since I made this a 3D layer, is to um, press U here. And let's see. Um, I want to animate this on the, on the Y rotation. Stops here. There you go. So click on the stopwatch on the Y rotation, move just a little bit. And then in this case, I'm going to animate this 180 degrees. Let's play this. It comes in and spins fast. Okay. One more time. There we go. And you can always fix those uh, timings if you wish. But uh, for now, I like what I see. I'm going to keep it as is. And we'll see what we're going to do later. All right. So I'm going to close this up and we're going to continue with adding a bit of a shadow uh, on the the bottom of the pin icon. So controllers to save, commands to save. Up next, the pin drop actually has a shadow once it lands on its location. And I'm referring to this shadow right here, this little thing. OK, it makes it a little bit more realistic. All right. So Let's go ahead and I'm going to lock everything here and then go ahead and use the ellipse tool. No stroke. Fill solid and color black is okay for me. Let's zoom in. So click and drag, hold on the shift key and create a little dot here. Let's make sure that this anchor point right sits right in the center. So layer transform like so. Now this sits right behind. So first of all, let's go ahead and rename this. That will be, let's say, pin drop shadow, perhaps. Okay. So like this, let's move it under the pin icon here. And then um, just going to move it up there. Okay. First thing, we're going to use the transform. I'm going to bring its opacity down, let's say 25%. Okay. And then go up to the layer menu, layer styles, and we're going to use an auto glow. So let's open up the properties of the auto glow here. And first blend mode, let's go for normal. Color black is fine. Now you can start seeing some results. Uh, opacity actually 100. Okay. And then I'm going to increase the spread and the size, let's say 10%, just 10 here, like so. So that will be before and that's after. Okay. I do like what I see. The thing is, it doesn't look too realistic. So we're going to make this actually a 3D layer. So Make sure this is a 3D layer. And inside the transform, I'm going to change the orientation here. And you see that? So I'm going to go for, let's say, 45 degrees, perhaps. Something like that. Let's see. Change that a bit. Uh, looks more realistic. Mm. Thing is, I still think this is a little too big. So on the S to scale this a bit. 
let's see. Still too strong. And then on the transform again, the opacity, maybe I'll drop this to 20%. And I think it looks pretty good. All right, so how are we gonna animate this? This comes, so this appears when the thing drops, when the, the pin drops and rests right there. So you can also click on the pin icon here and open up its properties, the animation properties, here you go. And it lands right there on this keyframe. So for the opacity, okay, uh, 20 is will be the last resting position. So I'm going to click on the stopwatch to create a keyframe. Just go right before here, I guess. Create another keyframe. Make sure this is zero. So let's play that. Boom. Uh, no. Okay, so I have to move this actually. Somewhere around there. Boom. Let's try one more time. Slowly it comes in and when it hits, it appears. Okay. If you think the uh, it's still a bit, um, the opacity is too much, maybe drop down to 15. Okay, let's see. There we go. Okay, something like that. All right. So we're also done with this. Now it looks more realistic. Okay. So I'm going to save that up and continue with actually this here. When you roll over, you get this information about the museum. So we're going to be doing this inside After Effects. So control to save, commands to save. For the last part of this movie tutorial, and in order to save a bit of time, I went ahead and created those four elements consisting of, first of all, this information box. And as you can see, I have a bit of a drop shadow. So all I did is add a layer style of a drop shadow. I have like an opacity of 20%. I added a couple of text layers here and then a photo, which I'll scale down quite a bit to 7%, okay? Now, in order to animate those four elements, we first have to put them into another composition. So let's go ahead and uh, select those four elements. Click on the first here, the photo, hold down the shift key, and then go up to the layer menu, pre-compose. Just make sure that you have checked the move all attributes into the new composition. And let's give it an appropriate name. Let's say information, uh, pop up like so click OK and now we are inside an, a new composition called information pop up with these four elements in it okay so the goal here is basically is to create something that will mask and reveal all those four elements and so for that we're going to draw a rectangle shape layer and use its alpha channel to define the transparency of the elements below so the way we're going to do this is use the rectangle tool, no stroke, just a fill. Make sure you have nothing selected here. Click and drag to create this small rectangle. Also, let's go ahead and make sure that the anchor point sits right in the center. So layer, transform, center anchor point. And then, um, well, first of all, let me... Uh, change the name to mask. Uh, we're going to use the pan behind anchor point tool to click and snap this to the right, like so. Because we're going to animate this uh, mask layer, this rectangle, from only its width, not the height. That's what I put the anchor point right here, all right? So for that, we're going to open up the transform property here, and we're going to break the scale. And this way, we can independently move the width or the height. In this case, I want to move only the width. So uh, go back to the first keyframe here, click on the stopwatch to create a first keyframe, 
and then just move a bit and then scrub this the width value all the way to the right keep going till you cover the whole thing the whole four elements like so okay let's go ahead and play this animation I'm looking at the timing here okay I like the timing what I don't like is I would like to have a bit of a easy is in so with this um, keyframe selected animation keyframe assistant easy is in go to the graph editor and you can have more of a pop here at the end so you can increase the influence a bit let's play that again there we go you can have even more uh, entirely up to you okay now i would like to make a point here in order to apply the transparency mask which in this case in after effect is called a track mat it will only apply to the layer directly beneath it but in our case as you can see here we have multiple layers so first we need to pre-compose those four layers and then apply the track mat transparency to the pre-composition layer so again, hold down the shift key here, select those four elements, pre-compose them. Let's give it a name of, let's say, animated mask. Click OK. Let's go back to the information pop-up. And all you have to do now is have the track mat. If you don't have this, just toggle switches modes. Click once and click again, in my case. So uh, in this drop-down menu, just click and choose the alpha matte mask like so and now that the uh, track mat is selected the visibility of the layer above is turned off as you can see because the alpha channel is being used from that layer so if i play this there we go let's go back to the main comp here and let's play this there we go now we have to time this a bit so after the pin drops and finishes twirling around, rotating, we're just going to move this here. Something like that. Let's play the animation. There we go. You can always go back and fix the timing or whatever you wish to do. And here we go, folks. An idea on how to create a root map animation using simple tools inside After Effects. This concludes the tutorial lecture and thank you for watching.